All right, hello, greetings, and welcome everyone to this news video. I am the Ninjaneer. The topics we're covering today are as follows. The future of transport, featuring Aptera. The EMR3 is in the Aptera's PI. Windscreen confirmed. Aptera's tires, suspension, and full production intent body, and things that I liked. I said that right on the first try. That was crazy. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So there was an article by Freethink which talked about the master plan to EV range, uh, to end EV range anxiety. And um, this article in and of itself was actually pretty darn good. Uh, the insights that they gave were very uh, solid and well thought out. Uh, my favorite part of the article, and uh, in fact the reason why I'm mentioning this article in the video, is toward the end here they talk about Aptera Motors. Uh, so this article was actually linked to the uh, X page of uh, Aptera, and um, I believe that they mentioned it for this reason that it had Aptera in the article. But yeah, they talk about Aptera being essentially a big part of uh, what could be the future of transportation, which is something I completely agree with and uh, part of the reason why I follow and uh, invest in and have a pre-order for the Aptera. So yeah, just this article is really fun. It's really good. It's well put out, well thought, uh, well thought about, well put together. It's just a really solid article. All right, folks, here it is. This is the EMR3 sitting in the body of the Aptera. Um, I did a lot of looking at this picture to see if there was anything uh, groundbreaking or crazy that I could figure out from the uh, from the picture itself, and all I could see is that they have fasteners uh, that come up to meet the EMR3. I'm guessing uh, this section connects directly to the body of the Aptera, um, and it's bolted in uh, cross with with a cross being. Uh, oh, sorry, it's bolted in with cross uh, bolts across here like that. And um, it is also uh, showing a little bit of the front uh, of the Aptera where the crumple zone is going to be, the front bumper and things like that. Uh, nothing too terribly groundbreaking because those are pieces that we've uh, at least seen before uh, or at least seen this week. Which reminds me, they have been on an absolute tear just sharing all sorts of little pieces of information which is where most of this video is going to come from. Uh, oh, well, actually, there's a coolant line right here, or a future coolant line right here. Um, this could be a coolant line as well. Um, yeah, I think so. This is going to be uh, the input or output, and this is the other side of that input or output. And in my opinion, I am not entirely certain on that, so don't quote me, but I believe that's what that is. All right, windscreen confirmed. We do have a windscreen for... Uh, the Aptera. This is the front windshield if you uh, didn't already follow my previous statement. But yeah, uh, one thing that I noticed that Aptera Owners Club did is they were trying to figure out uh, little details from the, uh, from the reflections in the glass. And all that I could figure out, uh, he basically said, hey guys, if you see anything extra, you know, let me know. But uh, if he is ever going to watch this video, I will mention here that I see the shoulder of the gentleman carrying it and the face of the gentleman carrying it up here at the top. Um, I see the ceiling and I see a reflection of what looks like part of the bank. So they are probably just about to uh, install this particular piece of glass. Um, it's sitting on a trash can that has something soft to make sure that the glass doesn't break and it looks like they were picking it up about to uh, stick it onto the actual Aptera. Uh, he talked about in, uh, sorry, Steve from Aptera Owners Club talked about the uh, Aptera's glass uh, rating and things like that, how AS1 is very uh, durable, or rather it meets the safety standards for um, the vehicle as they've prepared it. It actually is good for most automotive uh, front windshields, uh, just generally speaking. Um, anything beyond this would be like, 
uh, comfort glass like double paned or something crazy like that but I do not believe that AS1 counts as double paned so uh, yeah there's that um, yeah so just a thing just just beauty thing of beauty nice and clear and transparent as all glass should be uh, but yeah good times there Alrighty, so the next picture we have here is uh, a set of three tires. As you guys know, the Aptera is a three-wheeled vehicle, so they have the tires for the Aptera sitting right here. And in the background, you see uh, what looks like a, um, a rear hatch section that's just kind of sitting up there. It might be on the back of the Aptera. Yeah, it looks like it's on the back of the PI build here. Um, and you see... Uh, the tires here have a very strange and interesting tread mark that I've personally never seen before. Um, some eagle-eyed individuals saw that and uh, uh, noticed that the tires were wider. Uh, Timothy Medema actually asked, I expected much narrower tires from a low rolling resistant, for low rolling resistance reasons. Steve Fambro answers that by saying they are a special compound developed by Hankook uh, just for Aptera for just the right traction and low rolling resistance. So these are low rolling resistance tires, which is the reason why this uh, pattern is in the wheel and uh, the reason why the tires are designed the, the way that they are. Uh, so low rolling resistance tires. Uh, means that Aptera is just going to be that much more efficient. Uh, the width of the tires is actually pretty wide here. I would say like six and a half to maybe even seven inches across. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty beefy wheels. So you're not going to have to worry too much about sliding all over the road uh, from a contact patch standpoint. But uh, yeah, man, uh, really cool that Aptera is posting so many updates. Um, this might be that uh, of the front section where they bolted the motor to um, and things like that. So like there's all sorts of little goodies hidden throughout this picture if you look hard enough. But yeah, from what I see here, we got tires, we got the bank, we got, um, well, we got the, the PI build here. And then we got the pieces of the front subframe that will probably hold the motor in place. So yeah, that's what I see when I look at this picture. The next thing we see here is a... Uh, suspension piece uh, or rather the suspension knuckle situation for the Aptera. Um, this is like the CV joint I believe is what that's called. Uh, this is probably the steering strut and this is um, uh, let me see what that is. That looks like uh, and that might be like the mounting bracket for the tire or the, the actual uh, wheel pant. Um, yeah this is where it things are going to connect um, hopefully like I'm I'm not entirely certain what all this stuff is like this part right here but I know that's a CV joint and I'm pretty sure that's the steering uh, steering knuckle uh, let's see here yeah that looks like about it and I tried to look at the background of this picture this bad boy is so blurry like I cannot see anything except for what I believe is the actual Aptera and uh, it is sitting on that rack that was linked by Steve Fambro sometime earlier remember the little jig that they said oh this is going to be where we put the yeah it's sitting on something like that or maybe it's on a welding table or something like that it's yeah it's sitting on something and these are parts that they zoomed in on so you can get a, uh, a really solid piece of focus right here so you can see everything in detail here uh, but the narrow field of uh, depth sorry the narrow depth of field is making it impossible to see anything else uh, so it's a really close, really narrow depth of field shot that makes it uh, less than ideal for seeing details in the background, but really good for seeing details in the foreground. So yeah, fun times there. The next piece that we're talking about here is the actual uh, video for the uh, production intent vehicle assembly. Uh, this is everything but the wheels and uh, uh, wheels and suspension pieces so uh, wow so as I was going through here um, I saw a couple of little things like this little side view of the EMR and uh, like the brackets holding it in the reason why I thought that those brackets on the table with the tires was the the were these two brackets is because they look very similar with the little arching motion of the sides uh, so yeah I think they bolted them on there at that at that point and Put this video together a um, little bit of crumple zone here and uh, all sorts of fun stuff as you move throughout the vehicle the front hood um, yeah all kinds of stuff in there 
Um, just all throughout the video were just wonderful little nuggets. Oh, one thing that I wanted to talk about specifically was it looks like uh, if I'm able to, there we go. It look, oh, I missed it by like a quarter second. All right, so it looked initially like this was like where they would slide the battery pack or something, but then I realized, oh no, this is the jig that they put it on to assemble everything. So uh, yeah, you can see here that this is where they set it while they were putting all the pieces together and figuring out how everything uh, works. Um, I'm assuming that the next uh, monthly update, they are probably going to talk about how uh, the process went for putting it together and assembling it and things like that. With any sort of luck, we will have a fully assembled PI vehicle at the end of October. I believe that is very doable with how many updates that they're giving over this short period of time. But yeah, this video was just a treasure trove of wonderful goodies like the, suspend, uh, the struts for the... Uh, uh, for the hatch and the underside of the hatch, you can see the details of uh, the solar panel, um, the, like the, what do you call that, the concave uh, solar panel section there to make it look all fancy and cool and give it structural integrity. Um, yeah, you see like a close-up of the steering wheel. They have a round steering wheel in here right now. Um, I will admit that I love the yoke, but if they do turn it into a circle steering wheel, I... I'm not necessarily mad at that because uh, I'm used to a circle steering wheel as it stands right now. But um, yeah, you can see the circle steering wheel in there. You can see um, how it looks from the side, etc. Uh, oh, by the way, a lot of people have been mentioning this, but the transition from the CG to the regular uh, actual PI build, oh, beautiful. Like, dude, uh, Chris McCammon and all the folks that are working in uh, the graphics team and putting these videos together and all this kind of stuff. Just just top-notch. Good job, guys. Uh, let me see. Going through here. Oh, uh, so this is a closer look at the steering wheel um, and uh, the steering column as it goes into the Aptera, the, the pedals and things you'll get a closer look at later on in the video, I think. Let's see, I think you get a closer look at it later in the video. Oh, maybe not. Uh, or I skipped over it. But yeah, just a very cool look at where they are so far. Um, you can tell that by how much they're updating us and how many things that they're posting that they are like super into uh, wanting to show us everything they can because they're so excited about it. It's just, it's just a beautiful thing to see. It's wonderful to see a company that cares about what they do uh, to such a high degree, just strutting their stuff and like showing the last little steps toward uh, production. It's, it's great. It's just, I love seeing it. Um, so yeah, keep doing what you're doing, guys. It's fantastic. All right, folks. The first thing that I liked this week was a Drive the Lightning video where they interview a gentleman by the name of David, uh, David the Inspector, or rather his channel is called David the Inspector. I talked about him uh, I believe on my last video and how solid his content was. Um, I really appreciate the fact that he does a good job and apparently Drive the Lightning feels the same. They did an interview with him and got a little more context as to who he was and why he was a fan of Aptera. Um, yeah, just a bunch of fun questions that uh, they were asked. Uh, they were asking him throughout the, uh, the interview. Just solid interview from solid people uh, interviewing a solid person uh, trying to help Aptera make a difference. I am all for the messaging that they put in this video as well that says that basically everybody's trying to support one another. The, the Aptera community, community is trying to lift each other up. I, my goal in life is to make sure that everybody that, that, that uh, makes content that uh, seeks to make the world a better place or to make people more informed is uh, out there and uh, available for people to find and so that's part of the reason why I do what I do with the things that I like section is I just highlight channels that I think are really awesome. So Talos of EV uh, did a summary of what was the presentation for Tesla's uh, Wii Robot. Uh, it was basically a presentation that went over all sorts of fun little uh, pieces of tech from their uh, robo taxi to uh, a van to uh, their Tesla bot and all kinds of stuff in between. 
Um, it was a really mind-blowing presentation for several reasons, but the biggest thing to me was the design and scope of the RoboTaxi. It was just it seemed like it was really well thought out and it reminded me a little bit of the Aptera from a uh, from a, an ideology standpoint which I mean I figured it was going to be similar because they had the same goal as Aptera but uh, yeah just like uh, Drew was saying in this video it would be really convenient or really a really good idea for Tesla to consider at Terra Solar on their vehicle because they have such a wide uh, wide piece of, um, of real estate on the top of the vehicle and on the hood for um, solar panels. So yeah, I agreed with that assessment. I feel like they need to collaborate. They need to talk um, about this whole situation and get it worked out because I believe that at Terra could do um, a lot of good for Tesla, at least with respect to this smaller car and getting solar panels on it. Uh, besides Drew's coverage uh, from, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, besides Drew's coverage from Talos of EV, there was also uh, Futuraz's coverage of the presentation. Uh, he is one of those uh, drier, down to earth, uh, uh, really slick humor types, like. I'm not really sure how to describe him particularly well besides saying that he he will throw a joke in there and you'll think for like 20 seconds and then it'll pop it. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, he does that all the time. Uh, so much so that I've actually started catching on when he's throwing the joke out there and I can pick it up much faster than I used to. But yeah, very intelligent guy, very uh, well thought out videos. And uh, yeah, you should check him out. Now the last thing that I liked today was a video that is not related to anything EV or uh, alternative energies or anything like that. These guys are making what is essentially a gun to fire payloads into space. Their prototype of this particular uh, uh, launch method is air powered which I thought was fascinating considering that most people were trying to do rail guns and rail guns are really complicated just having really highly compressed air pushing against uh, a vehicle trying to get it out into space was an idea that I think is gonna have much more traction than what I initially thought it would after watching this video so uh, sorry before watching this video I thought it wasn't necessarily the best idea after watching it I'm like dude I'm totally on board um, their prototype is seen in the back here um, it's basically a really long tube and really well timed uh, charges of air that push the vehicle down the tube and uh, hopefully make it to space and all that kind of jazz. Uh, so right now, this this prototype can't make it to space, but uh, it will be scaled up with funding from uh, sources that are they're trying to get funding from NASA and all that kind of fun stuff. So um, yeah, I hope it comes to fruition because it looks really, really neat. Um, it seems like something that could really shake up the industry of space travel, assuming that they can get it to work. All right, everybody, with that, we are done with this particular news video. Thank you so much for watching. Do all of the YouTube-y things, and I will catch you next time.